Good evening. Welcome to the Daily Office, and thank you for joining me. This is Night Prayer for Thursday, February 14th. It's the fifth week after the Epiphany in week five of the Psalm Cycle. The scripture for this service, Psalm 85, and 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14 to 26. We need some volunteers to help out with the Daily Office ministry. If you have an interest in any aspect of video production, including leading the liturgy, reading the lessons, casting, camera, lighting, set design, artwork, music, or editing, please contact me through the prayer request link at www.brotherbill.net. Let's talk about how you can become involved and be a part of this ministry. This is an ecumenical and inclusive ministry. You do not need to be any specific particular denomination or religion. Everyone is welcome. And it is an opportunity that you can do from home. And join me now in singing verse 4 of part 2 of Psalm 66 by Isaac Watts. To the tune of New Britain. If sin lay covered in my heart, while prayer employed my tongue, then you had shown me no regard, nor I your praises sung. Our help is in the name of God Most High, the Maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Together. O oh, merciful God, we have sinned through our own fault in our thoughts and words and deeds and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We beseech you, overlook our faults, and cast our sins behind your back, that we may serve you and praise you all the days of our lives. Amen. And may Almighty and merciful God grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, come to my assistance, make haste to help me. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, you have been favorable to your land. You have restored the fortunes of Jacob, Leah, and Rachel. Alleluia. Psalm 85, and please recite it with me. Alleluia, you have been favorable to your land. You have restored the fortunes of Jacob, Leah, and Rachel. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people, and you have covered all their sins. You have taken away your wrath. You have turned yourself from the fierceness of your anger. Restore us, O God of our salvation, and cease your anger toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, that we may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what you have to say, for you will speak peace to your people, and to your saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Surely your salvation is close to us that fear you, that glory may dwell in our land, Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring from the earth, and righteousness look down from heaven. You give all that is good, and our land shall yield her fruit. Righteousness shall go before you, and shall set us in the way of your steps. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, you have been favorable to your land. You have restored the fortunes of Jacob, Leah, and Rachel. Alleluia. A reading from Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 2, beginning at verse 14. 
Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by Him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. Avoid profane chatter, for it will lead people into more and more impiety, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have sir, swerved from the truth by claiming that the resurrection has already taken place. They are upsetting the faith of some, but God's firm foundation stands bearing this inscription, The Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone who calls on the name of the Most High turn away from wickedness. In a large house there are utensils not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for special use, some for ordinary. All who cleanse themselves of the things I have mentioned will become special utensils, dedicated and useful to the owner of the house, ready for every good work. Shun youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do with the stupid and senseless controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kindly to everyone. An apt teacher, patient, correcting opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant that they will repent and come to know the truth, and that they may escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. Here ends the lesson. And now in the words our Savior taught us, we're bold to say, Our beloved which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us pray. We praise you, beloved God, for you forgive our iniquity and blot out our sins. We, you have withdrawn your anger and have become our salvation. Turn our hearts and grant us your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless Jesus, my soul, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Alleluia.